What's going on everybody? It's Warren. Welcome back to the Cosmic Wonder where we talk all things Marvel and MCU and yesterday we got the full official trailer for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness and it was absolutely insane. They actually revealed Professor X and the Illuminati in the first full trailer that we got for the movie and you have to be wondering right now if they revealed Professor X in the first trailer you can only imagine what other cameos are coming. Now this trailer is full of things that you need to know and I broke it down into 15 different parts that you have to know about this upcoming movie. No need to waste any time, let's dive into it. If you love Marvel and want to stay up to date on the MCU, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the latest videos and Doctor Strange videos. Alright, so to start off, first things first, they did release the official poster for the movie yesterday as well and it looks like Deadpool has been spotted in the poster. And it looks like they kind of hit him in a true Deadpool fashion. As we see the glass shattering that represents the multiverse, we can see a bunch of different people inside different shattered glass pieces. And if we go up to the upper left, we can see a piece of glass that kind of has a figure in it, although it is very well hidden. But if you enhance the photo, there does appear to be a very clear figure inside of this glass piece. And it's pretty recognizable, it looks like Deadpool. And he has his finger over his mouth going shh, basically saying it's a secret that he's in this trailer. He's not supposed to be noticed. This is kind of him breaking the fourth wall inside of a poster, which I think is brilliant. And again, talking about cameos and going through different universes all throughout the multiverse, seeing Professor Xavier and other members of the Illuminati, it is totally and completely possible that Deadpool is in this film, and I'm guessing he probably is. What better way to get him in the MCU, whether it's permanently or just temporarily at the moment? Now, we'll come back to this poster in a bit, but let's start with the trailer at the very beginning. Doctor Strange has a dream. He sees a desecrated sanctum standing alone by itself and at his feet we can see skeleton heads on the floor a lot of them clearly a lot of people have died here strange says every night he dreams the same dream and then the nightmare begins and he actually name drops nightmare however i'm not sure they're actually referring to the villain I do think it's a little node towards the villain, and if Nightmare is the villain, they are keeping him really under wraps. I think the villain of this film is actually going to be a variant of Doctor Strange and the Scarlet Witch. I'm hoping they keep it that way. I'm sure there are other sub-villains of the movie, like Gargantos, who we see in this, but I think the main villain is the Doctor Strange that we see at the end, which we'll get to. But this dream, since he's having it over and over every night, is most likely not just a normal dream, especially since he sees America Chavez being held captive by a monster in his dream dream and he also sees Defender Strange. My guess is that this is most likely a premonition of what is to come or a Doctor Strange from a different universe is trying to warn him about what's to come to his universe because it came to his already and by his I mean the other variant. Now, Nightmare was originally supposed to be the villain for the first Doctor Strange film, and then he was supposed to be the villain for this film. However, Scott Derrickson is no longer directing the film and Sam Raimi is, so it looks like that changed. But like I said, he still could be the villain, they just might be keeping that a really big secret. The third thing that's really important about this trailer is the scene where we see Doctor Strange with these red orbs. Now, we've briefly seen this before in the teaser, but this adds two extra scenes in it. One where he is examining the orb up close in his face, and the second where he seemingly slams all of these orbs into a book. Now, these orbs are most likely created by Wanda because they're red, which is most likely Wanda's chaos magic, which is also why Doctor Strange is examining them up close. He probably knows a little bit about chaos magic, but remember, a Scarlet Witch isn't really supposed to exist, so this is probably very concerning for him. Then that book on the floor could be the Darkhold, which is what Wanda was learning from. The post-credit of WandaVision is where we saw Wanda astral projecting, learning everything inside of the Darkhold. The Darkhold was created by an ancient evil elder god. So the magic inside of it and the magic that you would learn from it isn't exactly good. But this is the magic that Wanda has been learning. So again, it's probably very concerning to Strange, which is why he takes that magic and puts it back inside of the book. We then go back to the same scene that we saw in the teaser where Doctor Strange visits Wanda and he asks her what she knows about the multiverse. And here we get some new dialogue. Wanda says, Viz had his theories, referring to Vision of course, and he thought that it was dangerous in which Doctor Strange replies he was right. Now there are some really important things we have to talk about right here, because I think this scene is a complete lie on Wanda's part. 
Not only did they release this full trailer yesterday, but they also released a TV spot for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, which actually gave us some new footage on top of this. And that footage seemingly revealed that this scene right here is actually an illusion. If we see this scene from the TV spot, we can tell that this scene right here is actually the same scene where Wanda and Doctor Strange are talking with all of the white trees in the background. In this scene, we can see the trees in the background still, and it does seem to be the same shot of Wanda and the same shot of Doctor Strange. They are in the exact same positions. Now, Wanda may be learning from the Dark Hold, and she may be the Scarlet Witch, but Doctor Strange still has a lot more knowledge because he's had a lot more years to learn, specifically when it comes to actual magic and spells. So either here, Wanda gets really upset with something that Doctor Strange says and reveals what is actually going on around her, or Doctor Strange kind of says, cut the crap, I know what's going on. Because I truly believe that Wanda does indeed know a lot about the multiverse at this point in time, because in the post credit scene, when she was learning about the dark cold and learning new spells, she heard the voice of her kids. She knows that they are alive somewhere out there and she has discovered the multiverse and knows that she can go into a different universe and find them. So I think she's been studying about the multiverse this entire time and she's going to start to go through different universes in order to find her kids and get her family back and she might even be looking for a different version of Vision as well. He won't be the same of course, but he is an android so maybe she could perhaps put his memories back inside of his head. And this is where things get really, really intense. We see Mordo and we hear him say, I'm sorry, Steven, but your desecration of reality will not go unpunished. Doctor Strange is put into handcuffs, some very high-tech handcuffs, and then we see something that I have been talking about for a very, very long time. We see Doctor Strange being escorted by Ultron bots. And I know that this is where everybody, including myself, started to really freak out. These Ultron bots are most likely coming from a variant of Iron Man. Tony Stark, probably superior Iron Man, which I'll talk about in just a bit. But this variant of Iron Man most likely got what he wanted, a suit of armor around the world to protect the world, or in this case, a suit of armor around the multiverse. And I actually think that the Mordo that we are seeing here is a variant of Mordo, who is a part of the Illuminati, which Doctor Strange is about to meet. But this variant of Tony Stark, which I now have zero doubt that we'll see, and I actually think we do see him in this trailer, is the Tony Stark that was successful at creating Ultron and putting his suits of armor, Ultron bots, around the world. So the Ultron bots kind of arrest Doctor Strange and they take him to what looks to be some type of council. He's taken into a room in which we see six chairs and an open slot in between the chairs, and that's an important slot, which I'll talk about. This is the Illuminati, a multiversal Illuminati, which if you've been following the channel, I've been talking about this for a very long time because it just made sense. In the comics, they have an Illuminati that is formed to protect Earth. The Illuminati is a superhero group that was formed consisting of all of the leaders of all of the different superhero groups of Earth. In the comics, the group consists of Iron Man, representing the Avengers, Mr. Fantastic, representing the Fantastic Four, Namor the Submariner, representing the Atlanteans, Black Bolt, representing the Inhumans, Professor Xavier, representing the Mutants, and Doctor Strange. Now, we're probably not going to get that exact lineup for the Illuminati, but here's something very interesting that is spotted in this scene. In the comics, Black Panther was originally asked to join the Illuminati, however, he declined but it doesn't look like he did in this trailer. Because as Doctor Strange is walking into the room and we see the six chairs there, we can see a figure sitting in one of the chairs on the left. And if you pause it at just the right time, you can see a necklace around his neck, showing us that this is actually a variant of Black Panther. Now, this opens up some really big questions that we just don't know the answer to, like did Chadwick Boseman somehow film this scene before he passed away? I don't think that's likely, so I'm thinking that there's going to be another actor that is playing Black Panther, unless they decide to go with, like, Killmonger here. But I'm guessing it's a variant of Black Panther, and I'm very curious who they got to play this role. So it looks like Black Panther is one member of the Illuminati, and like I mentioned, this is most likely a multiversal Illuminati. A team that is not only responsible for protecting their own planets, but responsible for protecting the entire multiverse as a whole. When one universe, or when one person from a universe, gets out of hand and starts affecting other universes, that's where the team jumps in and tries to stop stop everything. And in our case, we actually have two beings who are affecting the multiverse. We have Doctor Strange and the Scarlet Witch. So Black Panther is one member. It looks like Mordo is another member because there is a figure that is walking in from the right to the left to go sit down. That looks like Mordo based off what we've seen. 
there is another figure sitting down in a chair who does look very, very large. This person is very hard to make out. We can't really tell who it is, but this person does look very, very big because if you look at the top of his head and you compare it to Black Panther's head on the left, it's much higher. So perhaps this is an X-Men of some sort. We'll have to wait and see, but there is one X-Men who was introduced in this scene. Like I mentioned, there was a space in between those chairs and it's an important space because this person does not need a chair because he has a wheelchair. And of course that person is Professor X. Doctor Strange gets in the room and Professor Xavier says we should tell him the truth. We should tell him the truth. Now we know it's Professor X because this was a very distinguishable voice. It is clearly the voice of Patrick Stewart. And then we see this character show up and this person doesn't just show up. It looks like they actually roll up and we can see the outline silhouette of them and it does look like Patrick Stewart. He's been rumored to be in this film for a long time and they just confirmed it. Instead of letting leaks get out of hand, they embraced this and they showed it. And again, they showed this, so imagine what other characters are going to be in this film. Now, obviously this part was amazing, but there still are a lot of other important parts of this trailer, so let's continue. It looks like a what if animated universe crossover is indeed going to happen. And there's actually two signs of this. One is in the actual trailer. We see America Chavez falling with Doctor Strange. We can see dinosaurs behind them, which I'll talk about in just a bit, but then we see a universe shatter. And if you look at the universe shattering, we can see a different world and it is an animated world confirming that they will at one point in time go into an animated universe. But there's even more proof of this in the official poster that we got for Multiverse of Madness where we can actually see Peggy Carter's shield, Captain Carter's shield, confirming that she is going to be in the film, which is something that has been talked about for a very, very long time. And it's now confirmed. Now also in this scene, we see dinosaurs and comic book fans know exactly what this is. This is the Savage Land, a hidden prehistoric land that has deep connections to Professor Xavier and the X-Men actually. So Professor X probably isn't the only X-Men that's going to be joining us. Now I doubt they'll stay in this land for a pretty long time. I'm sure it's just going to be as they're going through a bunch of different universes, but still this is going to be insanely cool to see dinosaurs in the MCU. Not that we haven't already seen like dragons and stuff, but still. Now, after we see this scene where we see the animated universe and the Savage Land, we see Doctor Strange and America Chavez falling. Doctor Strange is holding on to America Chavez, and then we see his face kind of turn into blocks. Now, this really does look like the Scarlet Witch part in the comics where she says, no more mutants. Now, we don't really have mutants in our universe in the MCU, so I don't think there's going to be a no more mutants moment, but I do think that this is a little node to that moment from the comics. Now, the next scene, there's a lot of debate about this scene right now. A figure comes in and starts fighting Wanda. We don't really know who this figure is because it could be one of a few people, or it could actually be a couple people that we are seeing here. Now, right off the bat, I'm sorry to disappoint, I don't think this is Nova at all. I know a lot of people really wish it were him, but I don't think it is. I think it's one of two people, or it could actually be two separate people, and I'll explain this. At first, I definitely thought this is Captain Marvel, and I still do think it's Captain Marvel, but it's a variant of Captain Marvel, and this variant is Maria Rambeau. She is coming from a universe where everything that happened to Carol Danvers, her partner, happened to her instead, and she's the one that became Captain Marvel. If you do a freeze frame and a close up here, it really does look like her. However, in the TV spot that was released for Multiverse of Madness, we see this person in a different light. There's different footage that was not shown in the trailer of this person, and this person actually kind of looks like Iron Man in this scene. It looks like Superior Iron Man, and for a while now, Tom Cruise has been rumored to be playing Tony Stark slash Iron Man in Multiverse of Madness. Now, of course, he's a variant, but clearly, since we see these Ultron bots here, there is an Iron Man that has perfected these bots and has put a suit of armor around the world of multiverse. It would make sense that we would actually see this variant of Iron Man. And I've been talking about Patrick Stewart returning for a pretty long time, and since that ended up being true, I would not be surprised in the slightest if Tom Cruise really is in the movie playing Iron Man, superior Iron Man to be exact. Because if you zoom in on this one, it really does look like this person has a goatee and a mustache, just like Tony Stark. And here's my theory behind this. If this variant of Tony Stark did perfect the Ultron bots and did put a suit of armor around the world, he has most likely perfected Iron Man suits as well. And seeing how this person is on the Illuminati, it would make sense that he would give his fellow Illuminati members suits. 
Why? Because these suits could harness the power of infinity stones. They're essentially giant infinity gauntlets. Instead of just a gauntlet, it's an entire suit. Essentially, it's what we thought and hoped we'd see in Avengers Endgame. And in these two different scenes here, they really do look like two different people. One really does look like Maria Rambeau, and the other does really look like Tony Stark. Now, it could just be unfinished CGI, or it could be complete misdirection by Marvel. But right now, I think that these are suits designed to fight some of the most strongest beings in the multiverse, since that's what this Illuminati's job is, to take out all of these beings who threaten the multiverse. And we see them fighting the Scarlet Witch. We see them fight Wanda, or who could be the variant of Wanda, because a variant of Wanda is introduced, which we'll get to in just a bit. But the big thing to notice here is that this fight is actually happening in the Illuminati's headquarters. As Doctor Strange is being taken in to see the Illuminati, we can see some statues of people with wings. In this scene here, where Captain Marvel or Tony Stark is fighting Wanda, we can see the same statue. So this is Wanda attacking the Illuminati, or the Illuminati attacking her. Either way, I don't think they're gonna win. I think Wanda is going to beat them. Now here we have a scene with America Chavez and Gargantos, and also Wong. Doctor Strange and America Chavez are in the streets of New York. We see America Chavez say, look out, and Gargantos attacks them. Now, for those of you who don't know, America Chavez has the power to travel interdimensionally. She can hop between universes using star-shaped portals that she can produce. And I'm thinking that this scene right here is where she comes to our universe for the very first time. A leaked audition a while ago kind of told us how America Chavez gets into the scene. It says she comes into our universe and a monster was attacking her. Now this monster is probably Gargantos who is shown here. So this scene right here is probably the first time that her and Doctor Strange are meeting. And from here she becomes an ally of Doctor Strange. Now from here we get into some really important things, specifically about the Scarlet Witch and Doctor Strange and their variants. Now, this is where we get the dialogue from Wanda talking to Doctor Strange, where she says, you break the rules and become a hero. When she says this, we see an alternate universe where there's a statue of Doctor Strange in front of the Sanctum. Now, what's really interesting about this scene, though, with the statue is that if you look, you can see white trees around the statue, the same type of trees that we see when Doctor Strange is talking to Wanda, even though I do think this could be an illusion, which leads me to believe that perhaps Wanda could be manipulating Doctor Strange a bit as well, making him see illusions. But of course, there's always the possibility that there is a universe where he is a big hero. And as far as the trees go, maybe they mean something or maybe they're just pretty. But Wanda finishes by saying, I do it and I become the enemy. That doesn't seem fair. And this is where we see the Scarlet Witch variant. Now, in the first, what I believe to be the first official poster released for Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness by Marvel Studios, we can see very clearly three versions of Doctor Strange and two versions of Wanda. We see normal Doctor Strange, Defender Strange, and who I'm guessing is an evil Sorcerer Supreme Strange. And then with Wanda, I'm assuming it's our normal Wanda, but then an evil one. And I'll explain that right now because the next scene that we get is Wanda covered in blood. Now, if you look at the background, you can tell that this is the Illuminati headquarters, which leads me to believe this is after her fight with whoever she's fighting in the Illuminati, probably all of them. But based off of the way she is standing and based on all the blood that she's covered in, it looks like she's won whatever fight just took place. Yeah, she got roughed up because she's fighting some of the most powerful characters in the multiverse, but she won. And to me, this looks to be the finishing blow. Now, she's not in her Scarlet Witch outfit, which leads me to believe that this is probably the variant because we see the Scarlet Witch in her outfit a lot. And when we left Wanda in WandaVision, she was wearing the full Scarlet Witch outfit. So I think the one that comes in wearing normal clothes is the evil one, but I think she's manipulating our Wanda perhaps telling her that they've taken everything from us and we don't have to listen to everybody because we are the most powerful being in the entire multiverse, which is true. I do fully believe that she is probably going to kill the entire Illuminati. Now, in the TV spot that was released that had different footage, we actually see a zombie Wanda and a zombie Doctor Strange. And I don't think these are different variants than we've already seen. I think they are variants going through something. I actually think maybe they die and kind of get possessed and that's how they become zombies. After all, like I said, the Darkhold is made by an ancient evil elder god. And in fact, Wanda's body was meant for that evil elder god to possess at one point in time so he could get back to the universe. 
universe. So I'm thinking that at some point in time, the two variants of Doctor Strange and Wanda, the evil ones, actually do die and perhaps become possessed. Possessed by demons or some type of evil god. And that's actually what I think we are seeing in this final scene where Wong is yelling strange and we see a very, very dark strange who seems to be possessed. Now, a lot of people were saying, oh, this is Null, the creator of the symbiotes and god of darkness, but no, it's not. I think this is just a possessed evil strange. And I think that this is who is going to be the main villain of the movie along with the evil Wanda. And last but not least, there is a scene in the TV spot where Wanda kind of shatters the universe. It actually looks like a scene directly from Marvel's What If with the Watcher where Ultron shatters the universe. So clearly Wanda has a ton of power and is going to make for an excellent villain alongside of Doctor Strange and whatever else they're going to throw at us in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. So let me know what you think about the trailer in the comments down below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the latest news and videos. For live updates, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And as always, thank you all so much for watching. Woof woof.